So now I'm going to talk about the second type of experiment you can do with your roller coaster to figure out a good estimate for the, the coefficient of friction, thinking about the energy drain as the coaster goes on. Whatever your coaster is, no matter how complicated it is, that's the most complicated coaster I can draw, you're going to have less velocity at the end than you've calculated given the conservation of energy. At the very beginning, your total energy is equal to the gravitational potential energy of that beginning spot which is going to equal the mass of your marble times the acceleration due to gravity times the beginning height. And that should be your total energy. A good way to sort of check to see how much of that energy is left at the end is to use video physics on a near-to-the-end portion of the track, hopefully the very end. And you know, open up video physics, film that portion of the track, set a good scale, put the dots in, and you want to get the velocity here off of video physics so that you can calculate the kinetic energy. Because at this point, the kinetic energy is just going to be one half mv squared. And these two will not be equal. If energy were conserved, the energy at the top of your track, which is all GPE, should be equal to the energy at the bottom of your track, which is all kinetic energy. But energy has been lost due to the force of friction. The way energy is removed from the system is by a process called work. Work is equal to a force times a displacement. And there's some complicated um, instructions about how that force and that displacement need to be in the same direction. Or if they're in perfectly opposite directions, you lose energy from the system. And if they're in the same direction, you gain energy from the system. Friction always is parallel to the track and the displacement is parallel to the track in the other direction. So that means friction is always going to drain energy from the system, and if this is the force of friction, this is the length of your entire track all the way to the bottom. So hopefully you have done that measurement. If not, take a string, go all the way down, hold it up against a ruler, measure the length of your track. If it goes in the air, it doesn't count. I don't want that length. I want the actual rubbing against the track length, because that's where you're going to lose energy to friction. We're not worried about drag. So total energy minus this energy is going to equal your remaining energy. So your original total energy was MGH. We're going to take away this number, and we're going to get kinetic energy. Now, we don't know this number, but we do know kinetic energy, so we can solve this equation for the energy I lose. And to do that, I'm going to say my original MGH at the top is going to equal the force of friction, oh, sorry, minus the force of friction times the length of the track, total length, the whole track, is going to equal your actual kinetic energy at the bottom. So the MGH at the top minus the force of friction times the total length of the track is equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. If we do this equation out, we're going to end up with the top GPE minus the bottom kinetic energy equals the force of friction times the length of the total track. You can solve this for the force of friction. That will give you the average force of friction on the track. And that's a really good number to have. It might be around the weight, it might be more than the weight, it might be less than a weight, but it will definitely give you the average force of friction. And then when you're doing energy calculations in the more complex way, you can use the average force of friction times the length of the small bit of track to do basically the same calculation. What was my energy at the beginning? What's my average force of friction? How much track have I gone down so far? That should give me not just the kinetic energy there, but the total energy there. Let me actually put that up on the board. So once I have your average force of friction, let's say I've got FF average. I calculated that already. I'm going to use that to find the energy at any spot. So that equation is going to look like the GPE at the top minus the average force of friction times the length of track so far, and that's going to equal the GPE at my new spot plus the kinetic energy 
of the new spot. And we're going to use this to calculate the kinetic energy of that new spot. And then you can go back to the complex energy calculations to see me kind of do this. When I do this, I use a guess at the force of friction, but if you actually did the experiment and you got an average force of friction, that would be even better. 